Did you know that most parasite infections go undiagnosed or misdiagnosed? Indigestion, bloating, acid reflux, IBS, constipation, tiredness, dry itchy skin, migraines, joint pain, weight loss, anemia, nutritional deficiencies. These are all common symptoms of a parasite infection. These symptoms are not very specific and can easily be confused with something else. And the last thing your doctor will suspect is a parasite infection. You might be surprised to learn just how common parasite infections are. They're far more common than most people think. We're often told that only people in third world countries can have parasites, but that's not true. If you've ever eaten sushi, walked barefoot outdoors, swam in lakes, consumed undercooked meat, or have pets like dogs or cats at home, it is highly likely that you have been exposed to parasites. Sometimes parasite infections can be asymptomatic. In some other cases, they start with a severe food poisoning. I've personally seen a case where one of my friends had some casual symptoms like bloating, indigestion, and increased food intolerances. Nothing too alarming. And then one day he threw up several worms. It can look pretty scary. Parasites come in many forms, viruses, bacteria, yeast, and worms, and they can live in various environments within our bodies, from the gut to the skin, liver, lungs, and even our brains. Parasites can live in our bodies and can cause a range of health issues, from stealing nutrients to causing life-threatening complications. There are hundreds of different parasites that can cause infections in humans. These parasites belong to various groups, including protozoa, helmets, which are worms, and ectoparasites, such as ticks and mites. Some of the common parasitic infections include malaria, giardiasis, various types of worms like roundworms, tapeworms, and hookworms, as well as ectoparasitic infections like scabies and lice. It's estimated that over 3 billion people globally are affected by parasites each year, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oftentimes, you could be experiencing symptoms of a parasite infection, things like constant bloating, indigestion, and acid reflux, and you would be checked by your doctor and given a wrong diagnosis and treatment. Antacids are commonly prescribed to neutral stomach acid and provide quick relief, while the root cause could have been a parasite infection. What's wrong with that? Well, reducing stomach acid will make you more susceptible for getting more parasites, as strong acid is needed to kill all the pathogens and parasites in food. How do you know if you have parasites? First, check if you have any of these symptoms. Here are 20 common symptoms associated with parasite infection. Abdominal pain or cramping, diarrhea, constipation, nausea, vomiting, bloating or gas, fatigue, unexplained weight loss, appetite changes such as increased or decreased appetite, fever, dry itchy skin, muscle or joint pain, skin rash or lesions, allergies or hypersensitivity reactions, anemia which is low red blood cell count, headaches, night sweats and sleep problems, flu-like symptoms, swelling of lymph nodes, Neurological symptoms. Some parasites can cause vision problems, confusion, mood disorders, and even psychiatric disorders such as schizophrenia. What tests can you do to detect parasites? Regular blood tests and stool tests won't detect parasites in your system most of the time. The only two options to figure out if you have them is to do an extensive test where parasite DNA can be detected or doing a parasite cleanse and seeing if anything comes out and observing if all of your symptoms go away. PCR tests are the most comprehensive for detecting parasites due to their high sensitivity and specificity, allowing them to identify low levels of parasitic DNA or RNA that traditional methods, such as microscopic examination, might miss. They provide clear and precise results, offering enhanced diagnostic accuracy and early detection. This advanced technology complements traditional microscopy, ensuring thorough and reliable diagnosis especially in challenging cases. 
Also, there are some common blood work indications that someone may have a parasite infection. An increased level of eosinophils in the blood. Eosinophils are a type of white blood cells that can be elevated in response to a parasitic infection, especially those involving tissue invasion or allergic reactions caused by parasites. Parasitic infections such as hookworms or malaria can cause anemia, which is reflected in low levels of hemoglobin or red blood cells in the blood test. High or low leukocytes Abnormalities in the total white blood cell count can occur depending on the type of parasite and the body's immune response. Some parasitic infections, like liver fluke infection, can cause inflammation and damage to the liver, leading to elevated levels of liver enzymes like ALT or AST. In the UK, for example, if you see your GP and get tested, they will only do this simple test where they check your stool under the microscope and do a simple blood test. My friend who I mentioned earlier who threw up parasites got tested and they didn't find anything. It's quite difficult to detect. So if you want more comprehensive tests, it's best to use private testing. I will leave a few links where you can get home parasite test kits. I know just the idea of parasites growing in your body sounds gross, but it's important to take action and eliminate them as soon as possible. Some large, warm parasites, like beef or fish tapeworms, can live in your body for up to 30 years and grow to up to 10 meters or 33 feet long without causing any symptoms. That's crazy. If you find that you have many of the parasite infection symptoms, or you get tested and get a confirmation that you have parasites, check out my next video that I will be releasing soon about a parasite cleanse protocol. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.